Good afternoon and welcome to the Church of St. Matthew, whether you're watching from home or someplace else, and also welcome if you are here in person. We appreciate the fact that you're here. We realize that it's taking not our lives in our hands necessarily, but taking a lot of chances because of the spread of the virus. So I urge you to be as careful as you can But thank you for joining us as we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. This is one of the feasts that's been moved to a Sunday. It used to be um, on the 30th of October, and they moved it to the end of the church year. Next week we start Advent. There will be a second collection today for the Campaign for Human Development. That campaign for kind of self-help projects all over the country has been being taken up by the United States bishops in all parishes across the country for 51 years. So it's a well-established and there are a lot of good projects that receive benefit. Like a couple of other projects, 25% of what's collected here in St. Paul, Minneapolis stays right directly in St. Paul, Minneapolis for projects here. And then there are other projects that receive money from the national office that are existing in this archdiocese as well. So I want to encourage your participation um, in that collection. If you pay attention real closely, Alan Christensen does not sit on his laurels. He's been doing this for eight months, and he continues to make tweaks and to make adjustments. Uh, He likes it because he just gets to spend a little bit more things on toys, electronic toys. But you'll notice that there are four gimbals, these pieces on which there's a cell phone, and he can operate, he can turn them if you pay attention. No, you should be paying attention to Father Steve. But if you pay attention, you'll see some of these phones move because he's doing that from his from his uh, command post over at the iPad. Also, we have one of the iPhones is being connected by an electronic cord because you didn't know this, neither did I. There are latency issues. Latency issues are issues where the sound is lags behind the video and it's measured in milliseconds. But we now have a cord so that that particular iPhone will not lag behind the video that's being seen at home. So we all we continue to thank Alan. He's been doing this for eight months. <laughs> and lastly, I'd just like to welcome a few confirmation students. They've been encouraged to come to Mass at least once a month. And it's kind of position when, when we ask them to come directly. Uh, They can breathe easy. We're not going to ask them to come up in front this week like we did last month, but we want to welcome the confirmation students as well. The gospel is Matthew 25. So my question for us this morning as we prepare to celebrate, when have I paid attention to my neighbor the way I'm counseled in Matthew 25? And maybe there's a few times when I haven't paid attention.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. We begin our prayer by calling to mind our sins and the gracious, loving mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you summon your holy people to embrace you as Lord and King. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you reach out to us with a shepherd's care. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory to bring salvation to your faithful people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant that the whole creation set free from slavery may render you service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. We pray this through Jesus, your Son, our Lord. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. He is one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock. When he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When the Son of Man comes seated on the clouds of heaven, surrounded by the angels, and he takes his place on the throne of glory, he will gather all the nations of the world before him, and he will separate them as a shepherd separates sheep from goats, the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then he will say to those on his right, come, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was, I was, I was sick and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was in prison and you stood by me. And then they will say to him, when Lord did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you or sick and visit you or in prison and stand by you? And he will say to them, whenever you did it to one of these little ones, the least, you did it to me. And then he will turn to those on his left and he will say, depart from me into the fire prepared for you and for Satan and all his angels. For I was hungry and you did not give me to eat and I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a visitor and you did not welcome me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and you did not care for me. I was in prison and you did not stand by me. And they will say to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? When did we see you naked? Or, a, or when did we see you as a visitor 
When did we see you sick? When did we see you in prison? And not serve you. And he will say to them, Whenever you fail to do it to one of these least, you fail to do it to me. And then he will say to those on his right, Now enter into the kingdom prepared for you. And to those on his left, depart from me into the eternal fire with the devil and all his angels. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Matthew's Gospel is divided into three books. The first book is the story of the infancy of Jesus, and it's the first two chapters. The second book is the story of the ministry of Jesus, and that's from chapter 3 to the end of chapter 25. It closes with the passage of the Gospel today. And then the third book opens on the beginning of chapter 26, and is the story of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But this middle part is where Jesus gives the instruction about what it is to be his disciple. And he concludes it with the passage from today's gospel, as if that summarizes everything that he had tried to teach them, everything he had tried to instill within them. The gospel today lays out the foundation on which is built a relationship with Jesus. The foundation is the living of the corporal works of mercy. Doing the works of mercy is, in fact, making an act of faith. You see, for Jesus, faith or belief is not a noun. Faith or belief is a verb. You do faith, or you do believe. At the heart of this believing, this faith, is a deep sense of gratitude for the gifts of God. A recognition that all that I am and all that I have is not mine, it is God's gift. And, and I'm invited to be a custodian of that. I'm invited to use that. I'm invited to work that. I'm, I'm invited to share those gifts with my neighbor, with my sisters and brothers, especially with those who are the smallest, the marginal, the ones whose name no one knows. In other words, the least of my sisters and brothers. It is that that faith is found. We stand on the edge of the only true and unique American Holy Day, the Feast of Thanksgiving. In fact, it is a Holy Day of obligation because normally there is a command that every member of the family gather around the table that day and give thanks. Even in the midst of a great challenge, in the midst of this pandemic, you and I are called to give thanks and to speak and to act with gratitude. Now I have a story I want to tell you. Martin Ringart was born in 1586. His father was a poor coppersmith. He lived in Eilenburg, Germany. When a position for deacon arrived in 1610, he applied but was not accepted. And disappointed, he accepted work in a Lutheran church school. But in May of 1611, he worked his way into the diaconate of St. Anne's Church in Eisleben. And proving his value through hard work, his hometown of Eilenburg invited him to come home and to be their pastor. 
Now in 1618, the Thirty Years' War broke out. And because Eilenburg was a walled city, refugees from the countryside poured into the city for safety. The overcrowding of the city combined with the consequences of war and a serious lack and shortage of food. In 1937, a plague arose and wreaked havoc upon the city and upon the continent. It was up to Martin to provide pastoral care for the entire town and for the refugees it held. In that first year, more than 8,000 people died of the plague, and Martin often had to bury as many as 50 people a day, including his own wife. Martin survived the ordeal, and it finally appeared that there would be relief and perhaps even the beginning of peace and the end of the war. Martin's children were traumatized by what they experienced, the plague and the war. They were traumatized by seeing their neighbors and friends die. They were traumatized by seeing illness all around them. Their lives seemed very dark and they, they had nightmares. Martin had to find some way of teaching his children in the middle of that darkness that there was reason to give thanks and to show gratitude to God. So he wrote a hymn, a hymn that his children could sing around the dinner table. Nun danket alle Gott. He taught it also to his congregation and it was later translated into English as, Now thank we all our God. His simple but noble expression of thankfulness has provided us with one of the most beloved hymns of the Christian church, a hymn that is far too often relegated only to the Thanksgiving season. It was written just as the plague began to hit his hometown. And this hymn became the theme of Martin's life. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. And then just in case it was not plain, just in case people did not quite get it, the second verse spelled it out further. And think of the devastation, the thousands of neighbors and friends who had died the sound of war raging around, and Martin had his children sing, O oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us. May he keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed. May he free us from all ills in this world and the next. In an age of anxiety fueled by yet another plague, this one a virus that sweeps across the globe, those words of Martin Ringart are worth remembering today as well. It might be well for this hymn to become, if you will, the battle cry of believing people during this epidemic, a statement that even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst, even in the midst of fear, we stand and we give thanks to God.
We pray now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now to the Lord God and we make our prayer. For us, the church, may we hasten our work to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and comfort the neglected. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, may they be inspired by Jesus' call to care for the least ones among us and develop policies and laws that show compassion to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the most vulnerable, for those living on the peripheries of society, forgotten, the overlooked, and the abandoned. May they find comfort and dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are working so that black lives matter, may we transform society so that every person matters in the eyes of God and in our eyes as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will celebrate Thanksgiving on Thursday, may we limit our celebrations even as we pray in Thanksgiving for all the blessings we have received this past year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone affected by COVID-19, may the dead be mourned, may the sick be healed, may families be consoled, May health care workers be kept safe and rested. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, virologists, and companies preparing vaccines to address COVID-19. May they be successful as soon as possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parishioners and friends who are sick, including Dorinda Martineau, Don Giesel, and Joseph Ard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our prayers, whether written, spoken, or unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
Pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. As we offer you this sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow upon all nations the gifts of unity and peace. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as the eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so now with the angels and saints, we do proclaim your glory as we sing. Lord God, you are the Holy One. You are the source of all that is holy. We humbly pray that you make our gifts holy. Send your Spirit upon them, and grant that by the power of your Spirit we may receive from this altar the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he gathered at table with his disciples, and it was there that he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He blessed and broke the bread. He gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more gave you thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all that sin be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. See, proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And so we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. 
We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. We humbly pray that all who share the gift of his body and his blood be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Gather her together in charity with Francis, with Bernard, our bishop, with the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember your servants, Jeanette Marthaler, Ted and Connie Rivera, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that they who were united with your son in death may also now be one with him in his resurrection, and to have mercy on us all, that with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, may we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity according to your will. You live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, you that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only, only say, say the word, word and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. of Christ. 
body of Christ. Christ. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, oh God, our refuge in every danger, we turn to you in our distress. Look with compassion upon the afflicted. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give comfort to mourners. Grant healing to the sick. Give peace to the dying. Give strength to health care workers. 
Give Give us the courage to reach out to all in your love. Look with favor and protect each of us and our families. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ask you to be seated for a moment. Thank you for your generosity to the Campaign for Human Development. Uh, If you forgot to bring some money for that, there are some envelopes for that particular cause. You could take one home as a reminder. And if you're watching from home and want to send something to the parish, we'll make sure that it gets to that particular effort. Thank you. Uh, There are two more weeks uh, that Isaac Garcia will be accepting uh, gifts and benefits for the the, uh, people that he meets in the city of St. Paul. As we've talked about before, he's done this as the fourth year, and he's now in official uh, 501c3, so anything you give is deductible. Um, Thank you, young people who are preparing for confirmation. Just stand where you are so we can see who you are. All the people to be confirmed. Come on. Up, 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 Marvelous. Thank, Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in four weeks when you come again, and you'll be able to help everybody decorate for Christmas on the Saturday before Christmas. So thank you, and... We just had some communication from the Archdiocese, and we'll probably be celebrating confirmation here again next spring at the end of the Easter season, because they're not going to do those kinds of things at the cathedral. Uh, Thursday, Mass will be here at 9 o'clock. It's not going to be videoed, so uh, if you want to come and pray in Thanksgiving for all that we've gotten all what we've received in in spite of the pandemic, please feel free and welcome to come. Next week begins the season of Advent. It's the beginning of the church year. Um, And we'll have some special Advent uh, ceremonies and some songs. The end of this week, everybody who is a registered household should receive a mailing from the parish you probably never gotten so many things in this mailing. But one of the things for your spiritual benefit is a, called a little blue book. You can read more about it when you get it. But it's a book that you can spend six minutes with every day in the Advent and Christmas season and grow in your relationship with the Lord. There's a lot of other things, which I'll talk about in future weeks, uh, that will be in that mailing. Thank you very much. And I'd like to invite invite Delphina and Ginny to come up to receive communion to take to our brothers and sisters who aren't with us. Receive the gift of the Eucharist. Bring it to those who were unable to join us. Assure them of our prayers and our concern for them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, having received the food of immortality, that glorifying in obedience the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. He lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.